This is the neighbourhood where Kim had been living with her Danish boyfriend. It's a really popular place for Scandinavians working in the creative industries, always packed after work on nights like this. It does feel edgier than other parts of the Danish capital, but by global standards, really safe. Kim was 30. She was from southern Sweden and was four years into her career as a freelance reporter. She'd already had her work published in The Guardian, The New York Times and Vice. She loved to travel and was about to move to China with her boyfriend. But first, she had one last story to finish. This was her home turf. Her birthplace was 45 minutes away from here in Sweden and she was living here. So naturally she thought she was safe. It just never occurred to her that something would happen here. Kim Val boarded a submarine built by Peter Madsen, a Danish inventor that she'd been waiting to interview. I could imagine that she thought she was going to have a fun ride. She had told her boyfriend that she was a little nervous going under the ocean, and, but her boyfriend said in court that he was actually a little jealous and wanted to come with her. This is one of the last photos of her alive. Police have identified this as the route taken by the submarine. Starting in the Öresund Strait, the waters between Copenhagen and southern Sweden, and then spending time underwater around Kuga Bay. The next morning, the submarine sank. Peter Madsen was rescued without Kim. Uh, Peter Madsen was a, a geek that was very interested from an early age to uh, create technical things. His big dream was to uh, eventually end up making Denmark you know, a rocket-producing uh, nation. He just didn't care about anything else. So he was not so caring about you know, uh, other people if they couldn't help him out. He, he was loving the people who could help him out, but if he didn't see any purpose for you, he might as well just disappear. Peter Madsen was arrested soon after Kim was reported missing. Later, the remains of her dismembered torso were discovered on a beach. Other body parts were found by police divers. It's quite hard to believe. It's just up there where that final photo of Kim Val with Peter Madsen looking out over the sea was taken. It feels really creepy. I don't feel very comfortable being around here, being so close to such key evidence in the case. But as a journalist, you get why someone would want to go on this. Kim's death grabbed headlines around the world. Some drew parallels to horror movies and Nordic crime thrillers something many here in Scandinavia found upsetting. One thing is uh, watching a Scandinavian noir series that you love in England, for example. Another thing is when there's uh, actually people suffering in the other end. I think it's a safe area for the normal population. Uh, this is a very unusual case. You've been in touch with Kim Bell's family during the investigation. How are they doing? Of course, they have, the, have had a terrible time uh, missing their daughter and then uh, since uh, all through the investigation and now during the trial when, when you get to see all the evidence and, and uh, I can't imagine what they go through and I feel truly sorry for them. The case has also deeply affected Kim's friends, many of whom were freelance journalists themselves. It's mind-boggling that her life has also become a myth and a story for how things are for our livelihoods and for the work we do. So it's, yeah, I think everyone who knows her personally, um, especially women journalists and like freelance journalists too, I would say, uh, we're all like very much still processing what's happened. You know, we're we're only really beginning to, to comprehend and to understand what we ought to do because, you know, it's this period of like really intense reflection and, um, and now we need to see action. 
Kim Val's friends and family have set up a foundation in her memory. It's already raised more than $200,000 to help support other female journalists like Kim. I think it's really inspiring to see that we can champion women in the midst of, you know, what has been one of the worst things ever to hit women in journalism in this industry. That we can continue to keep moving forward because to kind of like shrink in sadness or shrink in fear is the opposite of what Kim would have wanted and is the opposite of what is actually good for our world.